For its entire history, the NASCAR Truck Series has been nationally broadcasted on television from green flag to checkered flag. The inaugural season in 1995 was a massive success, with an average of 1.7 million live viewers across all of its races. By 1996, storylines were developing, stars were in the making, and Craftsman even became the title sponsor of the series, which would remain until 2008. Every NASCAR Truck Series race can be found on YouTube, various archives, or are tape recorded in the possession of a random guy, except one, the 1996 DeVilbus Super Finish 200. Before we dive into why, let's take a step back and catch up on what was going on at the time. Throughout the first eight races of the 1996 Craftsman Truck Series season, it was already obvious it would just be a three-horse race for the championship. Mike Skinner rallied off three straight wins in rounds five through seven and was leading the points. Ron Hornaday Jr., second place in points, won at Portland and had been the most consistent driver of the top three. The last driver in the trio was Jack Sprague, who was only 34 points behind Skinner and won in round two at Phoenix. Fourth place in points was already over 200 points back, and no one throughout the course of the season would be able to catch these drivers. By season's end, Joe Rutman would finish fourth place in points, almost 500 points back behind the trio. Skinner, Sprague, and Hornaday Jr. would be the class of the field. Now, let's get to round nine. The DeVilbis Super Finish 200. This was the first Truck Series race at Nazareth Speedway and the first and only Truck Series start of Rusty Wallace's career. According to Wallace, some of the motivation for this start was because the track was owned by Roger Penske and he wanted to help promote the event and bring a larger crowd to the track. Further, this race took place on an off weekend for the Winston Cup Series, so it made more sense. Although he expressed interest in racing more races, he would never make another start. Qualifying took place on Saturday, June 29th. Jimmy Hensley set the fastest lap, which would be the first of his career. Starting alongside him would be championship contender Jack Sprague. Come race day, Sunday the 30th, there was rain all morning that pushed back the start of the race. The initial start time of 1.40 would pass, and the four-hour delay resulted in the race not being broadcasted live at all. The race was supposed to be broadcasted on CBS under the CBS Sports umbrella, but it is likely that another sport or event was given priority over the truck race when it finally got underway. The Nashville Network, also known as TNN, was responsible for covering most truck and Bush Series races at the time. However, TNN was busy over at Walkton's Glen with the Bush Series race. I've seen in a couple tweets and one article that the race was actually aired in middle of the night on TNN a few days later, but that has not been confirmed and no broadcast of the full race has ever resurfaced. The only footage of the race that exists in the entirety of the internet is this one minute highlight reel that played before the start of the next week's Sears Auto Center 200. I'll let you watch it for yourself. They waited almost four hours before dropping the green flag in the DeVilbis 200 truck race in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Rain played havoc with the event that had Jimmy Hensley in his Dodge show the way from the pole. He led the first 103 circuits. This race was also sprinkled with Winston Cup stars like Rusty Wallace, Jeff Bodine, and Kenny Schrader, to name a few. None were a factor in the finish, though, but Mother Nature was, and so was outside pole sitter Jack Sprague. Sprague had a spirited battle with Ron Hornaday and Hensley, but Sprague's Chevy was simply too tough at the right time. He was the leader when the rain fell once again, stopping the event 48 laps short of the 200-lap mark. Sprague now has a piece of the points lead along with Hornaday. 95 Series champ Mike Skinner stands third after a disappointing 14th place finish. Yep, that's it. As you heard, not much happened in the fight for the lead as Jimmy Hensley led the opening 100 laps. He was passed by Hornaday, and then eight laps later, Jack Sprague would take the lead and lead to the end of the race. The end was quite abrupt as rain would fall on lap 152 of the scheduled 200 laps. We can see about halfway through the footage that the 23 of TJ Clark and the 8 of John Emichak wrecked. 
The 23 of Clark was the only driver, according to Racing Reference, to retire during the race due to a wreck. He completed only 56 laps of the race, so we can assume the wreck happened between laps 51 and 61. He could have been a few laps down when he wrecked, or could have ran a few more laps before bringing his truck to the garage. Nemechek would finish in 20th place. So what else happened? Well, on Racing Reference, we can see that there were 7 cautions, but there are no reasons for the cautions listed at all. Really, the only other information we get here is the starting and finishing results. That's literally it. I browsed online to find anything else possible I could find on the race. I couldn't find anything until I came across this article by the morning call. This article was posted on June 23rd, one week before the start of the race. It does give us more context leading into the race. The previous year, the Super Trucks became the seventh most attended series in history and set first year motorsports attendance records. The article also credits the boom in commercial truck sales for the popularity of the series. Beyond that, absolutely nothing else from this race. I cannot find any articles about the race, any storylines, what the other cautions were for, just nothing. There is this promo truck I found on eBay which is pretty cool. I know that the race happened like 20 years ago, but for there not to even be articles about the race is crazy. I can even find archives of footage and articles of my local dirt track dating back to the 60s. I watched the entire pre-race for the next race where the one minute of footage is found, but they don't even mention the race beyond this highlight reel. This race is truly lost, and this is because of the lack of media pieces written about it, the fact it was not broadcasted live, and there is no replay of it anywhere. The only confirmed picture I found of the race on the entire internet is this single photo of Cup star Rusty Wallace and the lack of overall information. The Vilbis would go on to be the title sponsor of a cup race in the Winston Cup Series the next year in 1997. Ron Hornaday Jr. would go on to win the championship in a close battle with Mike Skinner and Jack Sprague. In a way, I was sort of frustrated by the fact I couldn't find more information for this video. I wanted to kind of take something without footage and be able to paint a really good picture for you guys. But after reflecting on it, I think it adds to the mystery and intrigue of the event overall. If you guys know any information or somehow have a recording of this race or know somebody who is there, please let me know down in the comments below. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below. There are a couple more races out there that are sort of like this, maybe not this extreme of a scenario, but something like this. So let me know if you want to see that, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.